a Borna looking resplendent in carmine red. And she says it's a combination between ODM and Jubilee. By the way, did you know that um, Washimua uh, Millie has proposed more bills or has had more bills in Parliament passed than any other person in the history of this country? She's vocal. In other words, keep tweeting at Kunanga Jeff at Citizen TV. Can you the hashtag? It's JK Live. Mushimo, we talked about before the break, very disturbing uh, video on online, uh, on social media. Yes. The young man who allegedly was abused by his, uh, I guess, his schoolmate in school, and he went home and, and, and did a video off his phone and put it out on uh, Instagram. Yes. And it went viral, obviously. But mm -hmm. you were one of the first people to step in there and say, do you have that, uh, that t tweet? Yeah, there it is right there. And basically you said, uh, don't punish the boy. Yes. Because if you punish the boy, then you're going to destroy his future. And he has a, he has a promising future. Yes. Why, why, why did you step in so quickly? Did you see the negativity that came out, that was pouring out? Yes, yes. I, well, I saw the negativity. Oh, first of all, let me say that I saw what the boy, how Posted. the boy spoke. Yes. Uh, which was shocking. Yeah. Uh, but a pers as a person who has worked in the children's sector for very long and uh, an ardent watcher of TV, I could see this boy is actually, uh, <laughs> he occupies or most of his time he spent watching TV. Mm -hmm. So his parenting is on TV yeah. because he was acting out. That's not normal. The kind of things that he was saying are things he watches on movies. So he was actually thinking he's acting out a movie. Okay. Uh, but then when you look at a child at that age, even in the laws of Kenya, we always say that when you make a decision relating to a child, it must be in the best interest of a child, but you also must look at the evolving capacity of the child. Yeah. So under the laws of Kenya, because I was told even the DCI went to their school because they were looking at the criminal element or uh, supposed criminal <laughs> element where he's threatening to shoot. Yes. Now, yeah. when you threaten to shoot, the yeah. kids and need to understand that the age of criminal li liability in Kenya is eight years. So you eight years and below you are presumed that you, you to not be able to commit a crime between eight and 12 years there's the issue of um, emotional responsibility that for the court to determine that uh, you are criminally liable then they have to look at the child to determine whether he actually understands what he's doing uh -huh. and for me uh, i'm not i'm not a judge so i would say when it goes to if it does goes to court then the court will determine whether this boy was actually uh, was he at a state that he could understand that what he was doing was wrong and i don't think he did and i don't think even now he understands that what he's doing is wrong he and thinks yeah. he's acting a movie yeah, and he's a hero in a movie yes. and he thinks uh, he's speaking these big tough words that he sees in, in movies and he thinks he's a great, because when you see the next one that he, he posts with his uh, cousin, yes. then the cousin, he says, I'll make him go viral the way I did. Correct. He thinks it's a great thing. Yeah. There are two issues that you could look at it from the criminal element where he's threatened this girl. And especially because I was told that two years ago, there was an accidental death or a supposed accidental death in the, their school where a kid apparently was, uh, who died um, from a story or something. <laughs> so he may be reenacting that and thinking it's a movie for him. Right. But on the other hand, it also raises issues about whether it's a child that under the law we consider as a child in need of care and protection. But Moshimua, isn't that very disturbing? Yes, it is. Not only because, okay, he posted the first one, we were all shocked and we thought, okay, you know what, uh, let's move on. And then he posts a second one. Yes. Yeah, but that's what I'm telling you, that there's a crimin there may be a, a, a bit of it that may touch on criminality, especially where it threatens to shoot. Yeah. And I think this kid, somebody needs to tell him that when you threaten people, the law takes it seriously, especially when you're above eight years old. Yeah. And you can actually be uh, taken to court, you can be jailed, and you can be taken to, uh, uh, you know, jail, uh, not jail, you don't use the word jail, but it can be remanded yeah. like a in juvenile, in juvenile yes. Yes. facility and yes. taken away from the comfort of his home. So somebody needs to tell him that. And he doesn't realize but, this, right? No, he doesn't realize he's still in a movie. That. He's still in a movie. But then it also shows something. Where is, where are the parents mm. of this kid? Yeah. So there's an issue of parenting. Yeah. Because at first I say that there are sometimes even parents do their very best and kids turn out badly. <laughs> but 
in this case he does video one video two video three yeah. at this point i must ask where where are the parents and where you have a situation where a parent is not able to parent or is having difficulty parenting that child will be taken away by the government and put in what we call a place of safety yeah. and unfortunately because our facilities are limited when you take a child to a place of safety you will be putting your child in the same place where you have children who have committed offenses Worst crimes yes yes so either way whoever the parent is yeah. needs to understand that the child is walking a very uh, difficult path yes. and the cousins that is adding on mm -hmm. is actually putting them in danger so if the mother of this child is not concerned at least the mother of the cousin should take care because or, or, or friends and tell them your kids are posting yes right but i'm also calling on the at this level i am actually calling on the uh, department of children's services mm. to go and find out what is going on in that home because the children department is mandated to take a child such, such as the i mean that young boy yeah. to a place of safety so the children's officer and if the children's officers are not acting then the police should get him out of there. Do you think this is because an yeah. is, it looks like it's in a dangerous environment? Mushima, do you think this is an isolated incident, or is this? Do you think it's happening out there? That this is just the first time we've we've seen it. I think from what I'm seeing from this boy, we probably have a lot of children yeah. who are growing up with either absent parents or parents that are not paying too much attention. I know people are busy and uh, you know uh, there are many many you know challenges in terms of parenting yeah. people are looking for money people are hustling so sometimes we may forget and we think that our children are safe and one of the things that is creating that false sense of security is that your child comes back home and where do they go to tv yeah. where do they go to you internet. give them this internet yeah. yes so parents must also put certain rules. I live with my, my, my nieces and nephews. I have one who is uh, six years, I have one who is nine, I have 13, and I have 16. Mm. And the 16-year-old is in Form 4. None of them has a phone. They have no business having phones at this point. And TV? TV they watch, but we guide what they watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because sometimes when you check, especially even when we sometimes we give them like the iPad, yeah. and you look at what they look at, <laughs> sometimes you raise questions. Because when you leave kids on their own, yeah. they are very curious. Yeah. So sometimes parents think that watching a TV is harmless. They are thinking that if they are watching TV, they are not out there getting drugs. But look at that kid. That kid probably learned all those things from watching, you know, uh, programs that he should not be watching. Yeah. 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 Sad, huh? Yeah. And then what are kids doing on Instagram? That kid is like 12 years. Has his own account. Has his own account. Yes. It's ridiculous. Good Lord. So parents need to also put their foot down. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit of it is also the challenge is on us as parents. But I would also want to encourage people, I said it before, that if you have that video of that young boy, because he's still evolving, he's a young person, yeah. he probably doesn't understand. 20 years from now, he'll think that what he did is extremely stupid. Yeah. But then we'll have put it all over. So if you are a parent, please don't share the video of that young boy. Because yeah. you are not helping him. You are making him think he's a hero. He's not a hero. He's doing something wrong. And as adults, we are enabling him by, uh, you know, uh, sharing what he's doing and you know what they say the internet never forgets unfortunately Do you know yeah like you said 20 years from now i mean he'll be looking at that and saying how stupid was i yes but then now we are all sharing it yeah actually part of part of the you told me that i brought uh, a number of bills part of the bills that i'm bringing is a uh, child justice a bill that has just gone through the committee of uh, budget yes and uh, is awaiting uh, fast reading in parliament and one of the things he looks at is exactly just what we are talking mm -hmm. about here that children who may uh, be involved in uh, crime or something similar to crime yes. that at the very uh, you know what i'm trying i'm seeking to do is to introduce a cop a concept called diversion which is already being done uh, in a, a small scale in kenya but without the framework of the law and what diversion seeks to do is to acknowledge that young children 
you know, they're still evolving, they're still young. Yeah. And when you put them through the justice system, you scar them for life, for things that they didn't understand. Mm. So what we try to do is to uh, try and do out of court settlements. Like in this case, this child, when, if he's treated as a child in need of care and protection, then what he needs is counseling, not punishment. So it needs to be moved to a place of safety where it's counseled. I know a lot of people have said, uh, if I'm the parent, I'll chaper this kid. Yes, yes. Uh, and for some people it works if you are always chapering your kid. <coughs> but you are coming to this kid who has no, apparently, let me, let's say no, but appears like it apparently has no guidance. And suddenly you can he may be like, what? What, what's yeah. the matter with you? Yeah. He doesn't understand no. what you're doing. No. So this kid sometimes... He, does, he just needs somebody to tell him this is wrong. This is, you know, this is a no-go zone. Yeah. But it looks like there's, I don't know about the family, but if the mother or the father are, are, is not there, then the relatives need to come in. And if the relatives are not coming in, I want to urge the children's department to go and take that child out of the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever environment he's living in is not suitable for him. What are the kids doing on a rooftop? Two young kids. They, are, they look like they're 12 or, or, yes, or younger. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what like are they my, doing? My son is 12 years old, and I was looking at him and saying, goodness, if I ever saw this kid yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So there's something, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong with the yeah. parenting. Have we failed our children for the most part? I mean, for the kid to end up like this, have we failed them we are by failing spoiling them. them? We are spoiling our kids. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people are saying that uh, it's because we remove corporal punishment. But yeah. the corporal punishment was removed from schools. I'm not saying that, you know, beat up your kids at home, that's right. up to you if you choose. Correct. But the law removes corporal punishment from the homes. But it does not remove discipline in the homes. And yeah. discipline doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, corporal punishment. I've told you I live with my nieces and nephews. Yes. They all know. Because you have rules. We have rules. You come in, <laughs> and we have a young boy called Kwe who is very strong-willed. Mm. And when he comes in, we know, first thing, rush, take a shower, mm -hmm. whether or not I'm there. Mm -hmm. And he will want to try and go to, to watch TV, yeah. and we say, uh-uh, shower, homework. Who is putting those? And as a parent, you must make sure that you have those rules and guidelines and they know and you start giving them small responsibilities yeah. even if they are the smallest like now the our little queer <laughs> what we do is we tell him like in the evening uh, we tell him when we are praying go and get the books and he knows that's his responsibility he brings the books and he keeps them yeah yeah so you start giving them small responsibilities which they know are theirs but when you are a parent and you hope that children by some miracle will grow up to model citizens yeah. Uh, and, and I was a little worried also because we, we also find scapegoating easier. That in this country, whenever there's a problem, we say it's because of the leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you know, by the very nature of Kenyan politics, we misbehave as leaders. But what are you doing as a parent to shield your child from that sort of toxic yeah. environment? Tell me something, Mwashimiwa. If yes. you had children of your own, if that yes. was your child, yes. what would you do to him? If that was my child? Yes, if that was your boy. First of all, why would he be getting that level if he was my boy? <laughs> would he get to that level? And I can tell you, <laughs> the kids I live with know that I'm very loving, but also I don't joke. Mm. Uh, so you will know. Yeah. <laughs> I, have Utajua. Utajua. Mm. I don't joke. Yeah. Yes, I don't joke. And you know, the way we grew up, then you know, yes. many of us uh, grew up in a, a single parent, it was no joke. If you got out of line, you know, yes. pow, you If know? you get out of line, you are brought. So yes. really, I would say as a parent, because I know there are a lot of voices that say, oh, don't beat up kids yeah. and stuff like sure, that. Sure. So at the home, really, it's up to you how you want to manage. But there must be rules and there must be guidelines and there must be systems and they must be followed. Yeah. yeah. I know sometimes yeah. even with the best intention, sometimes kid t kids turn out badly. But do your role. Yeah. Do your role. Absolutely. I know that uh, it's a challenge because parents now are facing, you know, uh, parenting roles. Uh, you are fighting us against uh, other children in yeah. the schools. Yeah. And the social media. Absolutely. I was yeah. going to say the, the social internet. media. Yes. The internet yes. is also <laughs> helping you in parent. Yeah. So you must make sure that on a daily basis, 
you know what your kids uh, are engaging in, yeah. both at home and in school. And sometimes you'll discover that, and as a parent, you must learn. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you showed a, a video of me dancing with my nieces yes. <laughs> and, and nephews. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes as a parent, you must find ways of discovering. Like when I dance with them, mm. they will teach me new styles. Right. And I'm like, I'm always home with you here. So where did you learn? <laughs> You must be clever as a parent yeah. to know where did you uh -huh. learn if you are not learning them at home. Yes. So where are you learning where them? Where did you learn this? And you must also find a way of being talking very openly with your kids. Like for instance, when this thing came out, I called my niece Tawana. Mm. Tawana is around yeah. uh, 13. Yeah. And I sat her down and I told her, I want you to watch this because I know that's a, 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 a boy about her age. And I was telling her, what do you think about this? And we then get that opportunity to share. Mm. For the younger boy, yeah. now we don't show him. But we tell him this boy was saying very vulgar things. He said, what is vulgar? And I explain what vulgar yes. is. And I said, this should not be said. This is not allowable right. and stuff like that. Yeah. So get that opportunity to talk to your kids. Yeah. Let's not forget the, the, the girl who this boy was spewing at. Right? I mean, yes. she's going to be traumatized as well, huh? She's going to be traumatized. Yes. But do you know what is also unfortunate uh. here? What is unfortunate um, in all this thing is that this boy was raising a very fundamental issue that was lost in the abuses. That he said he was himself being bullied. Yeah. Yeah? Right, right. And being told that he's uh, gay. Gay, blah, and, blah, and blah, 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 yes. blah, blah. Yes. Yeah, but that got lost in his being abused. Yeah. So he moved from being a victim. Yeah to being an aggressor, yeah. yeah? So now nobody is actually, I don't think anybody is bothering anymore was this boy actually being uh, abused. Correct. Because he went completely off. Yeah. So I think what w w we need to look at, one, is this uh, young girl who has been traumatized, who was being threatened that her head will be blown off and all that, because yeah. that's also very traumatizing, mm. yeah? And also this boy that, you know, if the parents can't deal, the government must step must in. De must step in. Must step in. Yeah. It's no longer about uh, we should. No. It is actually a legal obligation of the uh, Department of Ch Children's Services and the police to step in and deal with this child. Yeah. Not deal with the child, but help this child and move him yeah. to a place of safety if the parents can't. You know, very, uh, it was scary, man. It's scary to see that. But hey, you know what? I hope it turns out for the best, huh? I hope so, too. Yeah, Moshima, let's switch gears now. Punguza Mizigo. Yes. What do you think of this uh, bill that, uh, by the way, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Moranga yes. rejected it outright. Mm -hmm. Now, Ikuru Court is suing the Kirinyaga uh, County Assembly for rejecting it or the way it did. Uh, Wasingishu has approved it. So the score is kind of two to one right now. Yes. What do you think of Punguza Mizigo? Oh, what do I think about Punguza Mzigo? I think the name sounds very nice. <laughs> the name sounds very nice, yeah. but with the due respect to my uh, good friend, Dr. Kuru Aukot, if he drafted it himself or he gave it to somebody else to draft it, he did not think as a lawyer. Mm. Or he was a little too careless because he's made some very fundamental mistakes on Punguza Mzigo that are not uh, redeemable. Such as? Uh, such as, for instance, even if you look at some of the, you know, technical ones, uh, but if you, I mean, the non-technical ones, but the more technical ones, I would tell you, is uh, he decides that he's going to uh, kill uh, the National Assembly and uh, the Senate as we know it, and instead come up with one man, one woman per county. Correct. Right? Yeah. Now, once he does that and we kill the National Assembly, when you have one, one woman per county, you are not bringing anything new. That's the women rep. Mm -hmm. So all he's doing is giving us back the women rep position and creating a male rep. Yeah. So you are killing the position of a member of National Assembly or MP as we know it and bring us as male reps. So that we'll be having a woman rep and a male a rep. Male rep. Yeah. Now this woman rep and the male rep will be representing counties. They will not be representing the constituency as we know them. Right. Okay. 
What does this suggest in the alternative? He says that we are going to have the wards, which he doesn't tell us how the wards will be demarcated. And some of the MCAs erroneously think that they will be the ones who are going there. You will have one, one woman, one man MP. I'll give you an example of Homer Bay County, for mm -hmm. instance. What that means is that you will have um, uh, all eight MPs looking for two, two positions. Yep. The ones who are more realistic will say, oh, okay, I will not be able to do this. So what do I do? I go to the county, which will be much bigger. Correct. I mean, not the county, the wards, which will be much bigger, yeah, yeah. really. So he's actually saying St that he's calling the MP position ward. So the MCS are actually the ones who will go home. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And then he will demote MPs to the ward level. Because MPs will go there. Yeah. Because you'll only have two positions. Correct. So in, in effect, what is done is thrown, thrown out those uh, MCS. But then the greatest uh, fallacy with it, I, I, I asked, you know, I had one of the uh, MPs who was supporting Pungu Zamzigo and uh, got her off Ganda. And I said, excuse me, uh, is your, are your constituents willing to let go of your constituents? No, no, no. So I said, so how are you supporting mm. Punguza Mzigo? Mm. I know for a fact that Suba North constituents are not willing to let go of Suba North. Right. So which constituency is willing to let go of their constituency? Absolutely none. None. Yeah. None. So how will you affect it? No constituency is willing to let go of their own constituency. Yeah. So that now if I want services, if I want services, then I go to county level or I go to an amorphous thing called the word. And then let me tell you another thing, assuming because what is likely to happen then is the words will be maybe slightly uh, bigger than, uh, not slightly, but probably maybe like two or three words right. together. In one. In one. <coughs> and then the counties, uh, of course, they are, you know, the usual counties. Yeah. I am a Suba. Suba's a minority in Homer Bay County. Yeah? Yeah. So you tell the Subas you are producing two MPs. When will Asuba become a member of parliament Never. in Homer Bay County? Never. Never. So the minorities will not support. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Tell uh, me, let's look at Migori, for instance. You make uh, one constituency called Migori County. You kill Korea. East mm. and Korea West, mm. and you tell them go and fight it out with the Luos in Migori County. Yeah. There's no competition. No competition. No Korea will ever be MP in Migori County, unless the Luos decide. Well, uh, we want to consider you out of charity, which rarely happens in in <laughs> politics. Yeah, right. Yes. And um, why does uh, Dr. Kuro Okot? Why does he catch feelings when people criticize this bill? Why is he catching feelings? I don't understand. Even I bring bills in Parliament, and there are many times, I've told you many times, my, like one of my bills that I brought, it passed in National Assembly mm. and failed in Senate. I don't catch feelings. You never even heard about it. What do I do? I brought it up again, Assisted Reproduction Technologies yeah. Bill. Yeah. It passed in National Assembly, failed in Senate. What have I done? Learned from the lessons that I got then. I will bring, I brought it now in the National Assembly. It's gone through first reading. I'm waiting for second reading. What will I do second time, which I didn't do last time? Mm -hmm. I took it for granted that Senate has understood what I was doing. Right. I'll sit down with each one of them and explain to them what the bill is all about. And if, I, if uh, the bill fails, it doesn't show anything about my intelligence or lack of it. Yeah. It just means I've not persuaded people. Correct. And I had told him actually when he first started that I was willing personally, I was willing to listen, especially on the one, one, one thing. Yes. But when I went in depth uh, on the bill, uh, I can't uh, quite remember all of it right now. I'm telling you, Jeff, no serious lawyer can support that bill. Hmm. It's nothing to do with the politics. This I can tell you for a fact. Yeah. It's just poorly crafted. I think Senator Sakaja put it best last week here on the bench when he said, feelings are chia dentist. <laughs> I think I agree with him. <laughs> it's poorly drafted. It's actually poorly drafted. Yeah. yeah. Which we want to take a even, break. Even the, the Tanga Tanga teams that were supporting it. Yes. When I was speaking to some of them, they now they've turned around. They say, ah, that was, you, that was not our thing. Because when, <laughs> when you actually cannot. now look at it, yes. majority of them, I speak to them in the, ah, you seek it here too. Because when you look at it in depth, you yeah. discover it has too many. As, and then he seems to have an issue also with women because wherever, if you like, he's uh, saying uh, he's removing certain provisions. Right. You go to 100, Article 100 of a constitution yeah. that he does away with. 
He does away with the uh, women and he does away with the uh, uh, marginalized areas. Hmm. Yeah. But then he leaves, uh, I can't remember the wording, but he leaves, uh, I think, minorities or something that will let, would keep his community. Oh. So there's also a bit of a selfishness in it, with the due respect. <laughs> Real quick, will there be a referendum next year? I highly suspect so. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a prophetess, but yeah. I highly suspect yeah. so. Okay, let's take a break, come back, talk about building bridges going yes. forward. Yes. Will this marriage last? Yes. The handshake marriage? Yes. And listen, there's someone who's not very happy in the other marriage, eh? Yes. He's very pissed off that the handshake happened. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. Because a handshake is a beautiful thing. When people want to get married, you know, amongst the Kikuyu, you have Rurashio and Gurario, amongst the Luo, you have the <laughs> Aye and the Nyombo. That's a beginning of yes. a, that's handshake. Yes. Yeah, but then, handshake but is... But then uh, you entered the bedroom. Um, I, Jeff, it's all about entering the, 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 the bedroom. Mm. One of the things I've learned in politics, and I thank God, and I'm, I'm, I'm very humble that God has enabled me to uh, get this far in politics, and uh, one of the most beautiful and powerful lessons that I've got in politics is usually from the public. The ordinary Kenyans that people don't take seriously. And one of the things that my own community, the Suba people have always told me, is they say, Yomoko lor, Yomoko ido. Hmm. Some climb as others go down. Yes. And they, what they are speaking to is the cyclic nature of politics. In politics, there are no permanent friends, no permanent enemies. Once you get into politics, you get into frenemies arena. So you can't say that somebody has gotten into bedroom. Which bedroom? There's no permanency, there's no permanent bedroom in politics. And politics also, there is no rear view mirror. But <laughs> <laughs> you get into a bus and there's rear view on Angalia Nyuma Kuna. Sony forward, <laughs> Mbele <too. laughs> All right, keep tweeting folks, at Queen Anga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag is JK Live. We are live with Super North Member Parliament, Millie Odiambo Mabona. We'll get to your tweets in a little short while. My goodness, so much ground to cover. Jeff Kinangela takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.